Hey everybody, it's Double RPG here, and welcome back to another episode of Double RPG Let's Play with Ninja Gaiden Sigma 2 on the PlayStation 3. In today's episode, we're going to resume where we left off, and hopefully we can finish up Chapter 1 in its entirety, but I know that we will. But anyway, let's go ahead and get on with this episode that's already in progress, shall we? And we're going to go ahead and we're going to do the flying bird technique and jump up here. And since we're up here, I think we can get a new weapon on us for once. That's in the first chapter as well. And I think that new weapon that we get is a return of the Lunar Rod, or the Lunar Staff, from the first game. You know what? I'm gonna have to Izuna drop your butt into oblivion! There we go, and we use the obliteration technique on your sorry hind end. There we go, and then we're going to use the ultimate technique on you to finish you off with flying colors. Okay, so let's go ahead and resume where we are. And I really don't think there's anything around here that's worth mentioning, unless we can go ahead and check things out right over here, which I assume there's something that we can take a look at. Of course, there's some Black Spider Ninjas that are coming here all of a sudden. Now, the Black Spider Ninjas, they actually appear more often in this game than they did in the first Ninja Gaiden game. That was on the Xbox and Ninja Gaiden Sigma on the PS3. And they have more relevance to this game as they do in Dragon Sword. So, as you can tell, they actually have more relevance as the antagonistic role. But I really think that they are extinct to this point when it comes to Ninja Gaiden 3. If I'm going to assume that, but I'm not going to say that much. If they have a newer role or whatever, but... For the most part, I think this is the last game that involves them, because Itagaki was originally planning this to be the last game that would tie into the original Ninja Gaiden series. Yeah, he was originally planning this game to tie into the original Ninja Gaiden series, but evidently that is retconned by Yosuke Hayashi, the current uh, chief producer or head director of Ninja Theory at this point. So, yeah... It's completely retconned right now, and we are going to be seeing a Ninja Gaiden 3, and the Ninja Gaiden 3 we're going to be seeing still has connections to Dead or Alive, regardless, and I think this game will also connect to the Dead or Alive series, and it still serves as a prequel to the series all as well, so. Okay, we got Devil's Way Mushroom. Now, the Devil's Way Mushroom is pretty much like the De Devil's Elixir of Life, or Elixir of Devil's Life, or whatever, and it will restore a small amount of key, or restore your key gauge by at least one point, if I'm not mistaken. So, yeah, we can use that if we are running short on Ninpo magic, and we can use more Ninpo if we want. Okay, so, let's go ahead and head over this bridge, and I think we will be fighting some more enemies once we cross here go ahead and attack this. It's really good to know that we can actually attack this stuff and try to get more... and try to get more Ninpo or whatever. <laughs> yeah, as you can tell, the enemies drill have really good AI when you take a look at some enemies in Hack and Slash games. They are no joke, and you don't want to be screwing around with these guys. But again, it's kind of like Battletoads. It's, even though it's hard, but it's not all that bad. Okay, so let's go ahead and jump up here. I thought there was something else that I wanted to talk to you all about that uh, that seemed very important, but I can't remember exactly what it is off the top of my head. It may recur back to me, but for now, let's just keep going here. And here we have a new cutscene right here. And this new cutscene, we actually see a big, giant, what equates to a Buddhist statue? Is that what it is? A giant Buddha statue? If that's what it is, then that's a pretty big, scary Buddha statue. But yes, this is one of the newest enemies in Ninja Gaiden Sigma 2 that was not introduced in the original Ninja Gaiden 2 on the 360. Okay, I went ahead and take care of those. And now, those guys with the arrows, you have to attack them with your kunai, or your shuriken. So that way you can actually do a number on him. And every time when you use Shuriken, it will actually count your hit gauge. And if you get up to 100 points, you'll actually get a trophy. And if you get up to 200, you'll get another trophy. So, yeah, it's an ongoing effect to see how long you can try to take down your enemies in terms of the number of hits that you land on them. Let's go ahead and uh, let's head down here before we have to go upstairs. 
And I'm pretty sure there will be some enemies that are going to try and attack us from upstairs. But let's stay down here. Because there are some treasure chests that we can get while we're down here. And I know that they will be coming down here any time now. So that way we can fight off against them. Yeah, one of them is trying to attack me from behind. And uh, let's go ahead and grab this treasure chest right here. And what do we get? Okay, we get a Life of the Gods. So yeah, Life of the Gods returns as well as Life of the Thousand Gods. So if you collect nine of those, they will increase your health. And oh my gosh, he used a death move. He tried to use a death move on me. Well, sometimes limp enemies will do that. So you want, you're going to want to be careful with that by all means. But I'd say pretty much just continually use the Izuna drop on your enemies because they're mostly insta-kill. And if you get enemies near you within the impact, then they will die gracefully. And there's some... Sp Black Spider Ninja Clan members that are up there waiting to attack us. So, let's go ahead and head up here. And we will give them a really good greeting. Yeah. And I had no idea that this was originally going to be Tobinobu Itagaki's last game to try to connect this game to the Ninja Gaiden series that was on the NES. That's really something. And also, there... I think the thing I want to talk about is some interesting tidbits about Sonya, the female heroine in this game, is that I think Ninja, or Team Ninja, has pretty much declared that Sonya is actually a code name within the CIA, and that her actual real name is Irene Liu, who is Ryu's love interest in the NES Ninja Gaiden game, so yeah, I think that was something that was entirely new, and they were trying to use that as a means to connect this series to the original NES trilogy. But of course, with the original NES trilogy, Ryu doesn't even know who Irene Liu is when he comes to the U.S. for the first time. So, it's very interesting to know that this game has some sort of connection with the original series by all means. Okay, and then we get a scroll here for the Flying Swallow technique. And we are going to be using that on an, on an enemy, and sometimes you can try to execute a decapitation on your foes. And it can count as an instant death move. Okay, we got ourselves a Devil's Way Mushroom. And sorry I'm not talking that much, guys. I mean, I already talked about Ninja Gaiden and Sigma in the past, but... Oh, uh, another thing I wanted to mention, too, is that... Even though I'm doing this live, recording this while I'm playing the game, the reason why I'm doing this is because when I try to do let, a Let's Play Ninja Gaiden Sigma on the PS3, is that I would record the footage ahead of time first, and then I would add my voiceovers in the post-production. And, so, and the video content would actually be kind of laggy because this game actually achieves true 60 frames per second in the gameplay. So, yeah something I wanted to do here so that way I can have much more to talk about instead of being distracted by the constant frame skips during the uh, whole during the whole post editing stuff so yeah just wanted to get that out of the way okay let's go ahead and continue to use the Zuna drop on these guys and I think the lunar rod is just beyond that door if I'm not mistaken oh come on yeah <laughs> I'm not kidding these guys are these guys suck but it's especially the stronger ones or the ones that are, have different colors that are more threatening than the regular small fry that we see here. But yeah, there are stronger members of the Black Spider Ninja Clan, and they will prove to be more and more... Uh, oh my god, we have ourselves the Buddha statue, and I think this counts as a first side boss. So we're going to be fighting off against it at this moment. And it will try to attack us, so you're going to want to be careful and make sure that you stay out of range from its attacks. And make sure that you don't make sure you don't try to get in its line of fire if it tries to grab you. Now you can attack it from either side, and you can just attack its hand from there. But pretty much stay out of the way of its grasp if you can. But most of the time you probably won't get in its you'll probably be in its way to grasp you. But for the most part, just stay where you are and watch out for the magical attacks because they are pretty deadly. And this is another thing that we can do in this game, is do instant death moves like that. If you just hold the triangle button when the enemy is limp like that, you can actually do an instant death move. Oh, and another thing I wanted to mention too, is that the gauge, that our health gauge at the top, you can actually notice that there is some red there that's being filled up in the health gauge. That means you are being wounded. 
And if you are being wounded, that means you won't recover health any higher than that. So you want to make sure you're using your your herbs of spiritual life as well as your great spirit elixirs if you want to restore your health and you can get rid of the red bar as well so that way you can have some really good health on you at the moment okay we finally get our hands on the lunar staff and i think we're going to be using this for right now so let's go ahead and have that equipped and let's go ahead and save our progress here and you can also use the dragons as well to restore your health completely so that way if you don't want to use your herbs or your great spirit elixirs then be my guest Let's go ahead and head down here. I didn't even realize that this chapter was actually very long. I thought it took me about half an hour to complete it, but evidently there's actually more to it than meets the eye. And yes, I did quote that Transformers quote, but oh well. Okay, and then we get our get a scroll right here that explains to us the ultimate technique, which we pretty much already did, and we're not going to be needing to learn about that ever again but we're going to be using it once we come into contact with the black spider ninjas that are just coming over the bend there and sometimes the the ultimate techniques won't go at 100 percent you have to keep absorbing your essence and sometimes if you get hit by the enemies then you're pretty much screwed and trying to do the technique but just be careful and just do a number on them like you usually do and then you should be able to come out just fine when you're trying to defeat them. Okay, here, here we got a notebook about the obliteration technique. And it says, why I ask you why? Why am I incapable of finishing off my enemies? The other apprentices lop off heads left and right. But what about me? When an opponent lies before me, blood spurting from mortal wounds, begging for the mercy of my blade. I stand there like a practice dummy. I can't bring myself to use the obliteration technique. Now, I th now that I think of it, my life has been full of tragedy. I saw far too much of this blood-drenched days of my youth. I must have suffered some mental trauma, causing my mind to flee from violence deep into the subconscious shelter. No, wake up! Obliterate! You must obliterate! Open your eyes and obliterate, damn it! Zenimaru. So yeah, this guy's a coward and he won't even use the obliteration technique, but we can, and evidently he has become quite a coward. But we're not a coward as we can pretty much use the obliteration technique when we fight off against our enemies here. Okay, and then we have the technique of ultimate guidance. Basically, that's us trying to absorb the essence nearby with the triangle button when we hold down to try to use the ultimate technique, and we can pretty much use the ultimate technique faster this way. So yeah, it's pretty much the same thing, except if you want to try to use the ultimate technique really fast, then you're going to have to absorb some essence in the process. And are we going to be fighting any more enemies coming up? Oh, we might be. I think we also get some stuff that's in here. You know what? I actually thought of this place as a, like a really safe place to hide out in, you know, in case if you want to have like a sleepover or something. It's just something you want to sleep in. Okay, now that I think about it, grains of spiritual life. This is actually, this actually replaces the great spirit elixir. So there are no elixirs whatsoever in this game. So I do apologize, guys. The grains of spiritual life, they restore a moderate amount of health. Or could there be a great spirit elixir? Ah, I can't even say for certain, but... Oh well, doesn't matter. Let's go ahead and... I need to see if I can use it. Okay, here we go. And I use the obliteration technique with the with the uh, Lunar Staff. Now, as you can tell, the Lunar Staff is pretty much equipped to its current state. And it can actually go towards a fourth level. And so we're pretty much at level two with the Lunar Staff, but they consider this as level one at this point. Oh gosh. There we go. We wanted to use this technique because these guys are really starting to piss us off here. And they still continue to piss us off. And they won't even do any damage to us until we put the hurt on them. And more Black Spider Ninjas are coming. Gosh, these guys are relentless. But I tell you, they're a lot more relentless when it comes to the original Ninja Gaiden 2 on the Xbox 360. Like, there's this one part near the final battle, or one one of the final levels, where you actually go up these stairs, and you actually fight over a hundred of the Black Spider Ninjas on the stairs. And what I noticed is that when, when you're fighting against those enemies, the game will tend to freeze up. Oh, come on! God, you guys don't screw around! There. 
And I didn't even use an obliteration technique on him because he already died. There, I finally got you, you freaking numbnut. Okay, so... I think we can actually go in here and try to look for some other stuff as well, so... Oh, God. Really? Oh, come on, camera, get over there! Guys, this is one of the things I really hate about this game, is that the camera angle is so bad. It's like, okay, we're at this point where camera angles should be fixed in gaming today, guys. It should be fixed. But evidently, it's not fixed. Because they just want to continue to piss you off. Okay, so... Anyway, let's go ahead and... and I think we're done here, and... I thought there was a Muramasa shop nearby, but I don't think that there is. So, anyway, let's go ahead and keep moving forward here. And we got some more of the Black Spider Ninjas to fight off against. Evidently, it doesn't look like we're going to be able to finish off this chapter in this episode. I had no idea that this was actually going to go on a bit longer than when I originally played this, but evidently that is the case. Okay, here we have the Muramasa shop right here. Now, when the Muramasa shop candle is actually glowing yellow, that means you can only buy the regular items, like the... Like the, uh... What do you call it? The grains of spiritual life or the herbs of spiritual life and all that kind of stuff. But yeah, you cannot even upgrade your weapons whatsoever. When the candle is blue, that means you can only upgrade one weapon per time. So, or one weapon at a time. So you're going to have to try to find many of those during this whole adventure, but we'll try to find them. Okay, and here we have Muramasa Shop, and he's telling us that we found one of the crystal skulls. And, search, and, we've been, and he has been searching high and low for these, and the more you bring to him, the bigger the discount that he will give you. Okay, so that's what it was all about. So, we actually do get discounts if we try to, you know, if we try to collect more of the Crystal Skulls, which is actually a good thing. But, uh, yeah, you want to be using these to buy your items, and I think it's actually a smarter move to do that, as it will save you a lot of time and trouble with trying to upgrade your weapons wholly. And just look how bloodied up the Lunar Staff is. Okay, and here we have another notebook. Shadowless Footsteps. My master tells me that the technique of Shadowless Footsteps is a basic ninja maneuver. He says it is the very spirit of the ninja to traverse where no path can be seen. In that case, I must be lacking in ninja spirit, because I'm completely incapable of performing this simple technique. I slide down the wall, or I slam my forehead against its surface. Either way, I look like an idiot. If... If it weren't for my metal headpiece, I'd, I'd have cracked my skull open by now. What honor can be can be had by a ninja as clumsy as I? When my comrades reach a valley, I slow them down. When up against a castle wall, they must carry me over. They say that in life, one must learn to rise above obstacles. I'd rather knock all these walls down. I never want to see another wall as long as I live. Hikageo. Okay, so this guy can't even use the the shadowless footsteps when trying to traverse against the walls. But evidently we can, and so can the Black Spider Ninjas. Okay, we'll just pretty much use the obliteration technique on you guys since we did chop off some limbs! <laughs> yeah, and some people say this game may not be bloody and pretty gory, but trust me, it is. I mean, just take a look at it with all the decapitations and all the other dis uh, body heart dismemberments and such. Yeah, it's pretty gory. And another new thing about this game is that they actually added a prologue, which acts as a pretty much a story that ties into the original, or to Ninja Gaiden Sigma 2, or just Ninja Gaiden 2 storyline. It just acts as a prologue before the events of the story actually take place. Okay, now we want to go down here, because this will actually bring us into this little highway formation. And before we go on any further, we're actually going to want to come this way, because I think there's an item that we can get behind these walls here. Nope, it's nothing. Okay, so let's go ahead and just head this way. And by the time we take down the enemies, I think we will go ahead and we'll stop this episode, since we've made quite a numerous amount of progress already. Okay, and here we get a get a look on the Furious Wind technique, which I think we already used. So, it, as much, as well as the Reverse Wind technique. So it's pretty much the same, but there is a notable, noticeable difference. Okay, so let's go ahead and go down this way. And here come the Black Spider Ninjas, and they're coming as a big ol' army. But not as big as the one in the original Ninja Gaiden 2 on the Xbox 360. 
And trust me, this game is, and I and I still go by my word in saying that this game is more of a breath of fair share because just uh, one of the bosses that you actually fight in this tunnel in the original Ninja Gaiden 2, it's really so difficult, and you actually waste a whole lot of time trying to figure out how you defeat it. It's pretty nuts, and it's really trial and error when trying to find out where this en enemy is going to reside, and you end up going inside these and going inside these caves within the cave or these little rooms in the cave to try to figure out where you need to where you need to uh, where you need to restore your health or where you need to go regardless okay we'll just use these unit drop on you since we pretty much got the lowdown on how to use it yeah and sometimes when you're using the Azuna drop on your enemies they will try to uh, there is a different type of moveset that you have to go by, like you have to press a one triangle button less than when you're using the Dragon Sword to try to bring these guys up into the air. So, yeah, I think that's how it goes. Okay, since we have dismembered those bodies, and since we're getting close to where Sonya was taken, I think we're going to go ahead and we're going to stop things right here. So, next time on Double RPG Let's Play with Ninja Gaiden Sigma 2 on the PlayStation 3, we're going to resume where we left off, and finally we're going to finish up Chapter 1 for crying out loud. Okay, gamers, take care of yourselves, and I shall see you on the next one. See you guys then.